Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable. And you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew and regenerate itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. We want to help you change your life today by getting on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Doc Wallach, which you can find it out at brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Our number today, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. It's our number on the bright side. If you have a comment or you have a success story you'd like to share, if you've heard something or read something, if you have questions about ingredients, formulations, skin health products, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts, videos, and all the longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you're an entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, you want to work for yourself, you're tired of having a boss, you want to make your own hours, work out of the comfort of your home and living room, the longevity business is something you want to think about, especially if you're interested in helping others. Not everybody's interested in helping others or making a difference. A lot of you guys are. I know a lot of people who listen to this, to this program are helper types. And people who gravitate towards the longevity business are helper types. I'm a helper type. We just enjoy helping people. There's a certain, well, actually it's neurochemical. You get hits of dopamine and oxytocin and wonderful neurochemicals that make you feel good when you help people. That's how the human body is built. That's how our neurology is built. When we help others, we actually jack up our biochemistry, our love biochemistry, our contentment biochemistry, our rest and digest and building and growth and repair biochemistry when we help others. Not everybody is hip to this. Not everybody is hip to the biochemistry or the neurology behind altruism, the desire to help other people. But if you're a helper type person, this is a business you want to think about. For a one-time $25 fee, you can have a business. You can start a business changing lives, making money at the same time. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more info or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And then also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we are talking fluoride. Toxic, nasty stuff. Nobody disagrees that it's toxic and nasty, even if uh, the American Dental Association recommends, uh, that, uh, recommends that we put it in the water supply and recommends people brush their teeth with fluoride and use fluoride gels when you're having treatments at the dentist's office. The Center for Disease Control says fluoridation of water is one of the 10 greatest health achievements of the 20th century. Even though the mainstream doesn't seem... Uh, doesn't seem to mind putting a, a, a known toxin into the, into the water supply. The fact remains, it's a toxin. I don't care what it does to your teeth. It's poisonous. It kills cells. 
It especially kills building cells, growing cells. That's where it works. Building cells in the mouth, those cells we called yesterday ameloblasts. Whenever you hear the word blast or the, the, the suffix blast at the end of a word in biology and cell biology, you're, you're referring to a factory, a producing cell. An osteoblast is a producing cell for bone. A myoblast is a producing cell for myo or muscle. A fibroblast is a producing cell for uh, fibers. Think of those, uh, those little Play-Doh extruder machines you used to have when you were a kid. Put the Play-Doh in the top and you press the handle and now comes a little string of whatever, star-shaped Play-Doh. That's what a blast cell is. A blast cell extrudes or secretes various types of tissue. In the, in the uh, gums, the ameloblast secretes enamel-like tissue. In the uh, skin and in the bone, the fibroblast secretes collagen and also moisture factors, sponges, gags, GAGs they're called technically. GAGs can be thought of as little sponges that attract water. GAGs give your skin a certain beefiness, a certain thickness. Well, fibroblast or, or a fluoride is toxic to the fibroblast. There should be no surprise. It's toxic to all cells. I don't care what the EPA and the ADA and the CDC tell you about how wonderful it is that we have fluoridated water and how wonderful it is for our teeth. It's a poison, a deadly one. A teaspoon of this stuff will kill you. And it's not good for your skin topically, as we were talking yesterday, either. Now, I don't know of any specific literature that says you, know, uh, uh, you apply fluoride to your skin topically and you're going to age faster, but just logic tells you it's not good stuff. And we wash with it. Uh, no, we don't only wash our face with it. We wash our bodies with it multiple times a day. And it accumulates. Fluoride accumulates. It particularly accumulates. you got kidney problems because it's eliminated by the kidneys. So after you wash your face, use your Truth Bomb and Truth Serum. It's one of the reasons why, uh, among numerous reasons, one of the reasons why topical vitamin C is the go-to anti-aging topical, uh, topical ingredient. There is nothing better and more important. Nothing. And in fact, there's only one thing that is equally important, and that's vitamin A. Now, vitamin A doesn't have the same protective effects that vitamin C has. Vitamin A is more for building things. Vitamin C is also for building things, but vitamin C has a protective effect. It will actually detoxify fluoride, which is why you want to drink vitamin C too, by the way. And the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a great source of vitamin C. It's one of the reasons why it's such a powerful product. So fluoride not, is not good stuff. Nobody disagrees. Even the, the uh, government agencies that think it's a good idea to put fluoride in, in the water don't disagree. The question is about the amount. The question is about the dose. Now, here's the thing about the dose. You can't control it in the water. If you're going to put it in the water, you can't control the dose. Again, this is just common sense. Yes, we know that you may be able to prevent cavities. It's arguable, first of all, but it seems like it, it will prevent cavities. It definitely kills cells. The question then becomes the amount. Even the American Dental, Dental Association cannot dispute the fact that the stuff is toxic and the stuff is poisonous. But here's the problem. It accumulates, and nobody knows how much we're drinking or eating because it's in the food. So, yeah, they can maybe get a rough idea of how much water people drink, but they can't control the water that's in the chicken or the water that's in the tomatoes or the water that's in anything we eat. The water that's in the food is fluoridated for the most part. It's even in the rain. It's everywhere. There's no way to control it. And this, this highlights the absolute intellectual and scientific and medical and therapeutic nonsense craziness around using drugs to get better. You can't use drugs to make your body better. Period. End of story. With the exception of pain and, you know, eliminating pain. And even those pain pills don't really even work. Pain pills work by just dumbing your brain down. But there, are, there is a time when you need pain, uh, pain medication. And there is a time when you need antibiotics. But aside from that, there are no... It, it's just... I could say there's no drugs that make you better, but just logically, there's no way you can introduce a foreign chemical to the body. And, and food doesn't count as a foreign chemical. Food is what we evolved with. A, a foreign chemical into the body and be better off for it. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right.
right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we've got uh, no calls. So if but you've been left on hold in the past or you uh, called and we kind of didn't get to you at the, uh, at the end of the program, now's the time to get on board at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about fluoride or water, or the longevity products, hypothyroidism, that's how we started talking about this whole uh, fluoride issue, fluoride, just add that to the list of horrible things associated with fluoride, fluoridation of, uh, of thyroid hormone, hormone and functional hypothyroidism. And, you know, I'm reading here from a, this is from a study that came out from the Journal of Epidemiological and Community Health. Epidemio, epidemiology, by the way, is the science of populations of how populations respond to certain, certain uh, uh, stimuli. Epidemiology, demo, D-E-M, from the people. Epide, epi, experiences of the people. Epidemiology is the science of, the, of, of how uh, uh, large amounts of people respond to cholesterol or respond to dietary changes or respond to fluoride or respond to different things. It's about large groups of people. And they're silly studies because they're just based on statistics and numbers. So you get these epidemiological studies, like this one uh, from the uh, Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health, that say things like, flawed study overstates the link between fluoride and ill health. So these people are questioning the link between fluoride and disease, because, the, because they say the, the study was flawed. You don't need a study, is the point. You just need a brain. You just need common sense. It's a poison. It isn't good for you, no matter what it says in a study. People always ask me, well, what kind of studies do you have? What kind of articles do you have about vitamin C? You don't need a study. Vitamin C is the rate-limiting step in building tissue. And vitamin C detoxifies fluoride, by the way. After you wash your face, use our true serum. How, this, how do we get into this whole pickle? Well, no surprise. It was a whole anti-human being, pro-corporation, pro-industry pro uh, strategy for dumping fluoride on the public. They found out that fluoride may, may provide some resistance to cavities, and they they played off on it. And it was one of the great PR scams of the 21st cent, of the 20th century. And no surprise, there was a guy named Edward Bernays who was behind it because this guy was behind a lot of the PR scams of the 20th century. In fact, he invented the concept of PR scams. He's known as the father of public relations, Edward Bernays, which is the science of manipulating the public. They call it relating to the public. I call it manipulating the public. They're not just, they don't want to just relate. They want us to do something. They call it public relations. They should call it public manipulation because that's what it is. Manipulating the public. And Edward Bernays was the first guy to recognize this. As we said, uh, I told a story a couple days ago, I'll tell it again real quickly. Edward Bernays was Sigmund Freud's nephew, and uh, Sigmund Freud was the first guy to really understand that there was this thing called the subconscious, that they didn't know about this thing called, we take it for granted today, everybody knows about subconscious. There's not, by the way, a thing called the subconscious. It's not like a place. You know, we have this vision that there's a place in our brain called the subconscious, like a little, like a little closet. That's not what it works. Subconscious, that's not what it is. Subconscious just means you're no, you don't know it's there, but it's there. Subconscious means it's affecting your life, but you don't know it's there. That's not a good thing, folks. There's parts of us, in fact, some uh, researchers believe 90% of us, that is our brains, our, 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 uh, our thought processes, our, our desires, our motivations, <clears throat> excuse me, 90% of them are, are, we're unaware of. We're doing things and we don't know why we do them. If you can't quit smoking and you want to quit smoking, but you can't, if you want to complete a project, but you can't, if you want to go on a diet or stop eating the way you're eating, but you can't, guaranteed your subconscious is working. There are things underneath your awareness that are causing you to keep smoking or to not finish a project or to not be able to complete a diet. Well, Edward, Sigmund Freud was the first guy to realize this, that people behaved and acted and did things based on this subconscious, on, on uh, ways of processing information that, that they weren't aware of, that were subconscious. But then, 50 years later, his uh, nephew said, wait a minute, we can profit on this. Sigmund Freud was just a psychiatrist. He wanted to help people. 
But his, his nephew, Edward Bernays, figured out that, well, if there's a thing called a subconscious, then maybe we can work with it. If it's 90% of people's behaviors and actions are based on parts of their thinking that they don't know they have, what if we manipulated it? And he wrote a book about how you do this called Propaganda in the 1920s. This was in the 1920s. He wrote this book. It's a little thin little book. You can get it off Amazon. It's like 100 pages. It talks about how you manipulate masses of people. So anyway, uh, and by the way, uh, the Nazis in World War II, they were the first, this, this was the first time manipulation of the masses occurred scientifically, using the subconscious, using the, the ideas of Sigmund Freud for a whole country. And uh, right around that time, the 1920s or 1930s, advertising and marketing was getting going. There was a lot of, there was more disposable income than there had ever been in the past. Industrialization had created a situation where for the first time in history, there was too much, too many goods to be bought. There was more goods than people. There was more stuff being made than people needed. So they had to convince people to, fig they had to come up with all these ways of getting people to think they needed the stuff the factories were making so people could make money. And so Edward Bernays got the idea, well, we could get people to buy things by manipulating their subconscious. And he was the, he, uh, the first, his most famous advertising campaign was called the Torches of Freedom campaign, where he got, uh, where some cigarette company, I forgot which cigarette company it was, wanted to figure out how to get women to smoke. They realized that women weren't smoking because it wasn't lady, ladylike. It wasn't feminine to smoke in the 1910s and 1920s. And so the tobacco companies were like, wait a minute, we got this whole market, we got 50% of the American public, i.e. women, who aren't smoking, how can we get women to smoke? So they hired Edward Bernays to create a campaign, and he created something called the Torches of Freedom campaign, where he got models, this is 19, somewhere in the 1920s, he got models, beautiful women, actresses, whatever the, the, the uh, uh, prototype for beautiful women were back in the 1920s. He got them all to smoke cigarettes and march in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, uh, or maybe it was Easter, one of those parades uh, in New York City. And they marched in the parade smoking cigarettes, and they called it the Torches of Freedom Campaign, and it was all about how women can be free and women can be liberated. This is, this is all the, you know, the, the, uh, around the time when... Uh, Women's votes and women's rights were, were big, uh, or at least women getting rights. Women didn't used to have the same rights as men until around the 1920s or 1930s. So anyway, Edward Bernays got women to think that it was a sign of freedom and liberation and being a, or being a strong, powerful woman to smoke cigarettes to the point today where more women smoke cigarettes than men at, uh, 100, years, 100 years later. Uh, Edward Bernays came up with the, uh, the, the bacon and egg breakfast campaign. Uh, they have a few other ones. I'm trying to think what other ones he had. Those are the two big ones I remember. Bre he came, got Americans to think they needed to eat a big bacon and egg breakfast. And then his other big coup, PR coup, was the fluoride thing. He got people to believe, uh, he got the public to believe that somehow it was good for us. It was healthy. Now, the public was set up for this by the, the pharmacological model, but nonetheless... Fluoride was looked at with a kind of suspiciously, and Edward Bernays got us to believe through advertising and marketing and manipulation of our subconscious that it was a good thing to the point today where 150,000 tons of this stuff is dropped into the water supply every year. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. A teaspoon of it will kill you. 150,000 tons. So are you tired... Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls in just a moment here. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about fluoride or fluoridation of water, comments. Or, what do you think about fluoridation of water? Does anybody out there, I want to know, does anybody out there think this is a good idea, fluoridation of water? If you think it's a good idea, I want to hear from you. I don't think anybody's going to be calling me on that, but... If you do think it's a good idea, let's have a little discussion. Because for the life of me, I can't figure out how anyone can think it's a good idea to put a poison in the water, even if it may prevent some cavities. There's a lot better ways. To, <laughs> there's a lot better ways to prevent cavities than to fluoridate the water. It's really absurd when you think about it. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our truth treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com. I call them truth treatments because they're treatments. This isn't some skincare line that you just smear on your face or on your body. These are treatments with active high amounts 
of active ingredient, as anybody who's used these treatments can will, will tell you, high concentrations of the two most important active skin ingredients, the only two you need, which is vitamin A and vitamin C. Our truth treatments are truth treatments because you put a little dose on your skin, like you dose yourself with a, with a drug if you're taking a drug or a supplement if you're taking a supplement. You dose yourself. I'm a pharmacist. I'm coming from the world of doses. So when I formulate skin, skin products, I'm formulating them like medicine. I want, what's the one thing you want your medicine to do when you go to the drugstore? If you're on a beta blocker or whatever, antibiotic birth control pill, what's the one thing you want to do? You want it to work. And the way your medicine works is by dosages. You take a little dose, you incorporate it into your body somehow, for better or worse, and something happens. So when I formulated my topical products, I wanted to apply that same strategy, allowing you to dose your skin, not with drugs, but with vitamin C and vitamin A, the two most important topical ingredients for your skin. Truth Treatments is about dosing your skin like you're giving yourself a treatment. The net effect is not that you feel product on your skin, but that you're stimulating the skin to do all of its work, to do its business, to do what it needs to do. That's how you take care of your skin. There's only really, it's like the body, you know? There's only two things you need to know to keep the body going. You gotta exercise it and you gotta nourish it. Actually, I call it exorest because it's exercise and rest. It's like a yin yang. One, le one leads to the other, and you need a little bit of exercise and a lot of rest, by the way. Likewise with the skin, you need a little bit of exercise, a lot of rest. How do you do exercise the skin? Alpha hydroxy acids. That's the importance of citric acid, glycolic acid, lactic acid, malic acid, tartaric acid. These are all acids that are found everywhere in nature, including in your skin. And when they're applied topically, the net effect is an exercise. It is the same thing as exercise. You stimulate, turn on growth by lowering the pH with the acid and by uh, removing the dead cells off the surface. That's called exfoliation. Exfoliation plus dropping the pH acts like taking your skin to the gym, acts like a gym, and you get more tissue, you get more collagen, more fibers. But you're not gonna get more muscle fibers if you go to the gym and don't come home and take your nutrients. You gotta come home and supplement and make sure you're doing your protein and make sure you're, uh, you're uh, taking your amino acids and your B vitamins and your essential fats and your minerals and zinc and uh, magnesium and all the things that help you make testosterone and, and grow muscle after you come home from the gym. Same with the skin. After you stimulate the skin, you drive in the vitamins. Uh, particular, uh, particularly vitamin A and vitamin C, really only vitamin A and vitamin C. You can get some benefits from the other vitamins, D and E maybe. You might be able to get some benefits from other nutritional elements like alpha lipoic acid, for example, but not nowhere near the same degree as vitamin A and vitamin C because vitamin A and vitamin C are actually incorporated into the blasts, the factory cells. Nothing else is. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. Just read a couple stories here and then we'll get to your call. So hang on here. This is from Free Radical Biology and Medicine. Uh, December 4th, 2017. Vitamin C, again, we find the power of vitamin C. Vitamin C deficiency and mitochondrial dysfunction in Alzheimer's disease. Vitamin C deficiency leads to an, uh, a, a diminished mitochondrial response. What are the mitochondria are the energy factories. They turn the food into energy, as we talked about a couple days ago. You eat... The cells eat. We uh, process uh, foods. The cells process foods. The cells are mini-me's. We have 100 trillion mini-me's. They do the same thing we do. A cell has an ability to take food and turn it into energy, and that uh, uh, process occurs in the mitochondria. They tr the mitochondria turn food into energy. Obviously, they're important because without them, you can't make energy. You can't use your food. Your cells can't use their food. And so it's, it's thought that some element of mitochondrial dysfunction is associated with all disease, or with Alzheimer's disease, I should say, but really it's associated with all disease because all disease is cell disease. And cell disease involves mitochondrial dysfunction. You don't need a study to tell you this. The take-home message here, however, is vitamin C, the primal panacea, good for everything that ails you, can also help you with uh, Alzheimer's d disease because of its ability to correct mitochondrial dysfunction. This also makes one question, or one think, could it be that our mitochondrial diseases, or mitochondrial dysfunctions in the first place have something to do with vitamin C deficiencies? I say it's a very good possibility because most of us are getting our vitamin C 
are, are getting enough vitamin C based on the RDA, which is ridiculously low. I call it the ridiculous deficiency allowance. It's silly, the RDA, when it comes to health because it's not there to keep you healthy. It's there to keep you from being sick. And there's a very interesting story there. We think health is just not being sick. No. Health is being optimally healthy and optimum amounts of nutrition are required for that, including and especially optimum amounts of vitamin C. And by the way, when you're deficient in vitamin C internally, vitamin C will get pulled away from your skin. Vitamin C will get redirected from the skin to the interior parts of the body, and you will be deficient in the skin first. The skin is the canary in the coal mine. You can bypass some of this vitamin C deficiency, deficiency that occurs in the skin by using it topically. Topical vitamin C will allow you to replace vitamin C that is pulled away from the surface of the skin. Now, ideally, you want to make sure you're getting enough vitamin C so your skin doesn't have to do that, but for most of us, we don't. And if we go to the bathroom when we urinate, we lose our vitamin C. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's say good morning to David. Let me get David here. Get David going, David in Texas. Hey, David, good morning. How you doing, buddy? Good morning. Oh, good morning. Doing great, thank you. Um, first off, you helped me get over my grave disease. I just thought I would do a shout out to you. you, you I appreciate me, that. You know, I didn't, life. though. I didn't. The well, information. The information. Did I just share the information? You pointed me in the right direction. I pointed you in the right direction. I like that. Thank you, David. I appreciate but, you pointing. Uh, I appreciate you acknowledging that. You bet. So I um, love your topics lately. Um, the frequencies were great. Fluoride's great. Um, the folks you've been talking about, Edward Bernays, Royal Rice. Did you know um, about him? Did you know about Edward Bernays? I did not, but I've studied extensively since you and I. I mean, since uh, since you've been talking about him. And, yeah, wow. Guys. Yeah, wow. <laughs> That's good. That says it all right there. Yeah. Hey, we got to take oh, a break. Boy. Hang on, David. I'm just, can you hang on through the break? Okay. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open. 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Side 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Talking to we had, we do have lines open by the way. Talking to David in Texas. Dave, you there? I am here. Hey, um, before before you go on to your question, let me ask you something real quick. Why don't you help, you, you could probably help some folks too? How did tell me what you did for your Graves? Ah, you kind of got got rid of the Graves disease, which is a, for the listeners is an autoimmune disease where the thyroid just races out of control and goes crazy. Hyper. What? thyroidism you, what did you do exactly I, I must i must say i probably did some things that were more drastic than others but um i'll kind of review them i had a i was self-employed at the time i had a super stressful job uh it was causing me nightless i mean nights of, of no sleep lots of stress so i actually sold my business took a normal nine to five job uh, where i could forget about my work after five um brought me a lot of peace and happiness um, I, I focused on calming myself down. I did a deep breathing probably four to five times a day. Mm. Um, just did everything I could to, to calm, calm myself. Thing. I actually bought a hot tub. Nice. Uh, it wasn't, nice. It was, wasn't, a, wasn't an expensive one. Actually, my wife bought it for me for, for Christmas one year. Okay. So I, I didn't buy it. I have to give her a hat off. But anyway. Um, did it make a it big difference, expensive. the hot tub? Did the hot tub make a yeah, big difference? Yeah, it was like 500 bucks. It was an inflatable one hand. I actually got in there get in there every single day. Every day nice. Every evening, I'm in nice. There. Do you know uh, what you're doing for your great. biochemistry when you do that? I mean, your, your, your oxytocin and your dopamine and your serotonin and your anti-aging chemistry, and you're, you're adding years to your life. You're reducing your risks of all kinds of diseases in addition to dealing with your hyperthyroidism. Well, well I hope so because I'm, I'm sure I've burned a lot of years of my life while I, while I had full-blown graves, you know, so... Um, you know that I, I lots of vegetable juices in the morning. I always start my morning with vegetable juice. Uh, take all the supplements that you recommend, every single one, to the T, to the to the dosage, <laughs> every single day. That's awesome. Um, of course, Good lots for of you. probiotics and enzymes and and, and you feel like you that. probably feel great. You got to feel great. You know what? I feel like a million bucks. I felt horrible before, and actually, I had all kinds of weird symptoms. I had 
I had early signs of ED. I mean, I wasn't. I was a mess. How, how old are you? How old are you, right David? I'm, I'm 51 years old. 51 years and young. You got a, you're a young I feel, man. Yeah. I feel better than I ever have, man. It's, it's awesome. Very clear. Awesome. Um, but anyway. Um, yes. You know, how can I know we help? You've been talking about people. I would hope one day you you could talk a little bit about um, Royal Lee. You know who that is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love Royal Lee. I you know he, yeah. you know standard processes here in Colorado. Yeah, I did know that. I, think, I thought they were yeah. older. But maybe they not. are Fort Collins actually, and uh, it's, Royal Lee was brilliant. And I have a bunch of his books. He, yeah, brilliant guy. Talk about him. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, anyway. Royal Lee was one of the first guys to understand that you could uh, understand the power of micronutrients, first of all. And also that, that is the things we take for granted, like vitamins and minerals today. Uh, he was one of the early guys back in the 1930s, and that really way early. I think maybe not that early, maybe 1940s. But, we, you know, vitamins had just been discovered in the 1920s and 1930s. So he was on it right away. And he knew you, he was one of the yeah. first guys to understand that you could use supplements creatively and intelligently and strategically to get the body better. And that was really a crazy idea in the 1940s, believe it, as you can imagine. Yeah, and, so, and so he just all a, the backlash that went along with it. it all the backlash, all, quacker, all the quackery backlash, because he violated the whole pharmacomedical uh, standards of care. You know, he said that you could use food and use supplements, which he provided, he sold. And I think he was big on glandulars, wasn't he? Was he doing a lot of glandulars also? Pretty sure, because they have standard um, process of glandulars. He might have been one of the early guys have. to... To understand about using glan glandulars or ground up hormones, uh, ground up glands that contain hormones. But uh, anyway, is that what you want? I don't want to. I don't mean to. No, no. I have actually some symptoms I want to talk to you about. Um, sure. Actually, so I, I have two things. I, I got my two wisdom teeth removed yesterday. Two of them. Um, my okay. two final ones. Here I am, fifty-one right. years old, and got them taken out. One was cracked. One had a cavity that needed to go. Um, I wanted to see if there's anything you recommend. First off. Yes. For the pain, since that's what I'm experiencing right now. Yes, and then absolutely. Also to help heal myself. A little absolutely, bit great, 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 great questions. Because uh, after surgery, you know, wisdom teeth, sur wisdom tooth surgery is still a surgery. You don't think of it that way, but it's a surgical procedure. And after all surgical procedures, number one, there's dramatic things that you can do, uh, Dave, to accelerate healing. But number two, guess check this out: you're going to find, and your doctors are going to find that you're healing much faster than uh, other folks. They're going, be, they're going to be like very impressed. This is what happens when you supplement regularly. When you do have surgery, your body's loaded, preloaded with all the nutrients it needs to accelerate the healing process, which is why not only do you want to use supplementation uh, uh, to help accelerate the healing of surgery, you want to use it pre-surgery. Pre-surgical procedure, if you load up on nutrients for 30, 60 days, or ideally for like a lifetime, or, or at least regularly before the surgical procedure and then continue after, you're going to heal dramatically. The gum is connective tissue, obviously, so uh, that's really where you're going to be healing is the gum. Uh, and there's anything you could do for connective tissue building. That's basically your key. That means the glucosamine, I'd be taking, uh, you, you're probably already taking it, but just double your dose on that. Go get yourself something okay. high, called high hyaluronic acid, maybe 300 milligrams, 400 milligrams a day. I mean, the only reason why you wouldn't want to take daily. The only reason why you wouldn't want to use it daily is because it'll, it's a little pricey. Uh, so you may want to back down to a cup, you know, take less after you start healing. But uh, everybody could use three, 400 milligrams of hyaluronic acid. Vitamin C is a must have, at least a couple grams a day. Best if you sip on the BTT all day. Again, you're, gonna, you're probably doing a lot of this stuff anyway. Uh, 50 milligrams of, that. yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. Go get yourself some Nox gelatin, or uh, some, uh, I don't want to say Nox, uh, organic gelatin. Organic gelatin powder, that's straight collagen. Or you can just get straight collagen powder. Uh, try to look for it organic because, you know, you want the, you want, or antibiotic free at least. You want the, the animals to be clean if you're going to get their collagen. Um, let's see what else you could do. Silica, liquid silica gel, a company make called, uh, called Abkit, A-B-K-I-T, makes liquid silica, liquid silica gel. Bone broth protein and bone broth together. Not just, you know, people, we confuse bone broth protein with bone broth. Bone broth has everything in it. Bone broth protein is the protein component that's concentrated. They're both valuable. So, so take them separately then? Yeah, take, you can take them, uh, you know, do your bone broth like a food, like a meal, or even, even you could sip on it, really, throughout the day. Um, you can, you know, bone broth protein is pretty tasty cold. If you, I'm sorry, bone broth is pretty tasty cold. Bone broth protein you're going to do once or twice a day because, you know, you've got to make a smoothie. 
Uh, eggs also, but always crack an egg in your bone broth protein. All this stuff is in the interest of building tissue. Bonus, you get less wrinkles if you keep doing it. Bonus, you get a stronger digestive system. Bonus, you get stronger bones when you do this. I mean, you can see what's, what right. we're talking about here. Your, your body yeah, is I, 20. I say, you, you, go ahead. Yeah, I've been having lots of compliments on my skin since, uh, since I started stuff. Yes, yes, nice. exactly. Yeah, kind of weird. Exactly. But, uh, anyway, I have one more question, which I think you already answered. I also yeah. think I've got a torn rotator cuff. All the same I thing. Think I all, every, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. all the same thing. All the same thing. All the same thing. You might want to get some, some kind of like local stimulation, like acupuncture or maybe elect, electrical stimulation on the tissue, kind of stimulate things. But as far as, uh, as, far as the nutritional supplements go, all the same stuff. Okay. And then so once you have done. your surgery, call, are you going to have a surgery on the cuff, on the torn rotator cuff? Well, I want to avoid that. That's my last reason. You know, I can't tell you now. whether you can avoid it or not. If it's torn, it's torn. But you, you can certainly try. If you do have to have a surgical procedure, though, do everything pre- and post-surgery that we talked about. And also, after surgery, do body work. Have a chiropractor or a rolfer, R-O-L-F, rolfer or a chiropractor work on your body after surgery, especially if it's a joint uh, like the rotator cuff, if it's a joint especially, but any part of the body, because once you have a surgical procedure, you're going to end up using your body differently, and this can cause problems down the road. You also end up with scar tissue underneath, and once that scar tissue builds, it could be real. It, it could wreak havoc on your on your uh, structural health for the rest of your life. So after surgery, pre and post surgery supplement. After surgery, make sure you're doing some kind of body work or adjustment work from a chiropractor or a rolfer. Anything else, yeah, my friend? Thank you, Ben. Hey, no, God yeah, bless great, you. Great day. We'll Good see to right. talk to you. Thanks, David. All right, let's go real quick uh, to Mark in Alaska. Uh, we only have a few seconds here, Mark. I, I hate to do this to you if you're there. Are you there, Mark? Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for the show. And um, Dentist said I may have something that's called lichen planus. I know about uh, lichen planus. Thumb. Yeah, lichen planus. If you have lichen planus, that's a food problem. That's an immune problem, immune system mm -hmm. problem. So you want to focus on the immune system. That's a sign that your immunity is low. Uh, if your immunity is low, sugar is the number one culprit for dropping immunity. Nutritional uh, deficiency is number two. Zinc, picolinate, 50 milligrams a day. Ultimate uh, immune system building mineral. Vitamin C in high doses. Ultimate immune system boosting vitamin. Make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Sip on it all night, all day long. And it, uh, the Healthy Star Pack would be great. Just the whole Healthy Star Pack. All right, thanks, okay, Mark. Excellent. Appreciate it. God bless you, my friend. Have a beautiful day. And I'm sorry we left you on hold. If we left you on hold, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all, all our truth treatment products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.